All right, folks, so we're starting on Learning Suite. We're down. We're going to start with the file that we ended off with last time we were together, which should be ah, right up here, Tuesday, February 21st, this Array 117. Download that file, and that should be where we, where we picked up. That's the file we're on. And let's just review some of the code that we wrote last time we were together. Okay, so we just wrote one set procedure called initialize arrays. We declared three arrays, one called hotel, an array of strings, one called route, an array of integers, and one called distance, a two-dimensional array of single, of get type single. So someone tell me, what is something that we mentioned about arrays yesterday? What was yesterday? What was something? Something that seemed meaningful about what an array is. It's an array of something. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's got variables. An array of variables, right. And so when we talk about an array, we, we are declaring, with well, this line right here, we are declaring several variables at once. Remember, a variable is just a location in memory with a name. Here I'm declaring 36. They're all named route with an index that keeps track of which one's which. So route 0 through 35 gives me 36 variables in that array. Okay. Now, we did this one here a little different. We didn't tell it how big it was because this is a dynamic array. Make a, a dynamic array, we declare it without telling it how big it is, and then sometime later, we have a readim statement. And the critical thing here is that when we're doing readim, we can figure out how big we want to make it. We figured out what the hotel count is here, and then we declared that to one less than that hotel count. We can do this dynamically. The dim statement, this has to be a constant expression. It's got to be just a number there. We can't have a more complex expression when we're dimming. But when we're redimming, we can. That's the whole point. So if we need to make it a different size, depending on something we don't know when we're programming it, when we're writing it, we declare it as a dynamic array, and then redim it to actually give it its size, and then we're off, off and running. OK. We then filled up each of these arrays with some values. The hotel array, we set up a little loop and said we want to refer to each one of these 36 elements in this array. 36 variables. So we've got a loop that's going to go from 0 to the highest index. And we are going to run that loop. So hotel sub 0 is going to be some value off the sheet. And as we increment which variable we're looking at in the array, we're also incrementing which column we're looking at. And so we're just reading these values off of our distance sheet. We're pulling these values in right here. Control home. And as we're putting it into the array, we're just reading these values right across here. So that's, that's this first loop that is reading those values in. Next loop then does the same thing for the route, except in this case, we're not reading those values in. We're just initializing each one of those arrays to a number different than zero. What was wrong with zero? That's right. This, this whole route, what we're doing with this is we're keeping track of which order we're going to the different cities in by putting an index number in that. Here we're to say hotel number one is going to be Los Angeles, or hotel number zero is going to be Los Angeles, hotel number one is going to be Salt Lake City, hotel number seven is Las Vegas. And so we're going to use those numbers to keep track of which order we're building the route in. And since this starts out with zero, all these numeric variables start with zero, it would say we've already been to that first hotel, we don't want that. And so we're going to initialize all the variables in this array to be some value that's not a valid index. So when we ask, have you been to Los Angeles, the answer is going to be no. Then the last thing we did was we filled in our array for distances. Now remember, our distance array is a two-dimensional array. So when I refer to it, I've got to provide two indices. Here, my hotel and my route array, I can just give one index, and it identifies the variable. But here, I've got this whole array of variables. Well, that's true in both cases, but two-dimensional now. And so I need to give it both a row and a column to tell it which variable I'm referring to. And so that's why this one looks a little bit different. And so let's think about this outside loop first. I'm going to have x go from 0 to 35. 
x is, think of that as our, as our rows. And so x is going to start off at 0, then y is going to start off at 1 more than 0. So the first time I get to here, I'm looking, I'm going to be assigning to variable number 0, comma 1. And I'm going to be reading a value from 2, comma 3. I look over here to my distance sheet. Row 2, column 3, that's the first place that I'm reading the value from. I'm reading that into the array. The next time I hit this line, this is going to be, I get to the next y. y will go up by 1. x is still 2. y is now, sorry, x is 0. y is now 2. So I'll be looking at row number 2, column number 4. So my next value will come in here, and I will continue to iterate across until I've gotten that whole row. Once I finish this loop, right across that first row, I get to the next for this outer loop. It will increment x, and then y goes back to x will now be 1. Y will start off again at 2, go up to 35, and read the correct value. This is a pretty complex loop. Not terribly complex, but as we're starting, there's a lot going on. Any questions here? This loop is set up just to read the numbers that are on the sheet. It doesn't, well, these aren't really here. It reads these numbers, but it has to fill in all these other cells. And that's what the second line does here. It says, hey, when we write to row number zero, column number one, let's also write that same value to row number one, column number zero. Let's flip those indices, and that will give us the mirror image along the across that diagonal. Go ahead. Why do we need that information? Ah, the question is, it was just duplicate information. Why do we need it? And the answer is, ultimately, what we're going to do with this data is we're going to say, I got to find out. If you remember, we're going to we're going to execute. We're going to we're going to implement the next nearest city algorithm, which means I'm going to say, if I want to find out the next step after Salt Lake. I gotta find the closest city to Salt Lake. And so the way it is on the worksheet when it starts, I would have to navigate, let's say I'm trying to find the closest hotel to this one. I would have to navigate down this way until I got to the diagonal and then switch and go this way to see all the values, all the distances from that city. It's just a simplifying thing for us to say if we fill this whole thing up. Now, all I have to do is pick a row for this array. That's all I've got to think about. I don't have to go down and then switch and then go across. So, you're right. We don't really need it. We could code around it. But this array is a rectangle, or it's a square, actually. Uh, and so, we've declared that memory. We don't save any, any memory by not putting those values in it. So, we might as well use it. That's the reason that we're doing it. But, but you're right. We could do it. We could solve this problem that way. Okay, so to kind of get us going here, what I'd like to do next, I would like to actually fill this part of our little sheet one over here. So we've got, we have the hotel names filled, we've got our, our distances, our, you know, our, our route initialized, I'll put negative one back in there. I would like to fill in all of these with the real values. So I'll just it's this, again, this is not a necessary part of our example. It's just going to help as we're working through this to have those filled in, just to make it a little easier for us to talk about. So when I'm initializing, let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be very similar to this loop. So I'm going to copy this loop. All right, x is going to go from 0 to 35. y is going to go from 0 to 35. We're going to go over all of them. Now let's do this. Let's say that sheets sub sheet one dot range. See, where did my data start on the sheet? It starts on I four. So I'm going to start this at range I four. I'm going to offset 
X rows and Y columns. I'm going to set the value of that cell equal to whatever distance I have in the array. So a little bit complex of a line. I'm choosing a sheet, starting off in a particular range, I4, the upper left-hand corner of my the actual place I'm trying to put the values. And now, when X is 0 and Y is 0, I'm going to offset 0 rows, 0 columns. That's going to be I4. And that's going to be whatever value is in 0, 0. And as I increment and go to one more up in Y to read the next value in Y, X is, one, X is 0, Y is 1, I'll be offsetting 0 rows, 1 column. So that should just take all the values out of this array and drop them onto this worksheet starting at range I4. You see this okay? I'll go ahead and run this. And it's going to have a bunch of decimals on there. Let me go ahead and uh, round this down. I'll round this to zero decimal places. I'll run that. And that should give me my distances. Looks like, yep, is that the right number? 691, 693. Okay, how are we doing, folks? Questions? This one's going to be an important one to us. It's going to be the first one that we work on. We can go ahead and highlight that one in yellow. Zoom in. All right. If we're looking at this loop right here, and, and, and the reason that it printed all those numbers out is mystical. Now's the time to say it. Let's, let's talk through it. Can you talk through the, the distance, what we have going? I think you already answered it, but yeah. This one here? So we have, so we're essentially creating the, the nearest city algorithm over the whole thing. What we're, yeah, we haven't actually started to make that algorithm yet. That's what we're going to try to do. So what is so what we're doing here is we're, what this loop here does is it's going to read those distances off the worksheet and populate them into the, into the array. Let's go ahead and I'm going to run it right to here and we'll run this code and maybe we'll position it so we can see this and the immediate window at the same time. Let me scroll up here. I'm going to run to this point. So let's go ahead and print x and y. Right now, x, y is left over from wherever I used it before. So let's pretend we didn't print x and y yet. Let me run these first two statements. Okay, so here's, I'm now for the first time I'm going to refer to this array, and I would like to see x and y. So this is the first time I've gotten here, x is 0, y is 1. x is 0 because we said for x equals 0 to 1. Now we get to the next loop, and we're going to say y is going to start 1 more than x is. So x is 0, y is going to start at 1. The point is, is that when we initialize this array, it's a, it's a numeric array, it's going to have zeros everywhere. The default value for all numeric variables is 0. There is no reason... <coughs> Wait a switch page while we're on this. There's no reason for me to read this cell right here because it's already zero. My array is already zero there. So I'm going to start off by reading this one. Where if I'm thinking about the indices for the array, it's row number zero, column number one. And so that is the first, that's the first place that I'm looking right here. I want to read off of that row number two, column number three. That's where my first value is. Row number two, column three, that's the first value I'm reading. So I have to offset this so that my same indices that I'm using, uh, the same variables I'm using to access the array, I can just shift them to be able to access row and column on the sheet. And it's off by two. So I'm going to read from the sheet x plus two and write to x. I'm going to read x plus, or y plus two and write to y. And so as I go through this, we're going to come back up here. We've incremented x. Now x is one more. x should be 
I'm sorry, y is one more. So x is still zero, y is two. So you come in with y loop. And so now we're getting ready to read this value in. Next second loop, we'll read this value, this value, and this value. Once I've gotten all the way through that 36 times, Thirty-six times. Go off the okay. I'll come back up to the upper loop, come up to here, and now x has gone up by one. Y is still where it was until I exit this line. Now y has gone back to should be two now. X is two, or x is one, y is two, and we're ready to start right here and run across this one. Run across this one. So we're reading all those values in. And when I write it to, to 5 comma 4, I want to put that same value in 4 comma 5. And so this line just says, we're, we're reading across one side of the diagonal, and then we're writing the, in the same value to the analogous position on the other side. On the, right below that, on sheets, on the sheet 1 portion, where you actually had both sides of the table filled out? Yes. How did you do that quickly, like, without transposing each column in a row? Like, so here, yeah, so you notice here when I'm reading this, I'm not reading all of the rows. My row gets shorter each time I read the next one. Uh, but here, I'm writing out the whole thing. I'm starting at y0, so I'm writing out those full rows. So how do I get those values in there? And that little piece of magic happens right here. So what we're saying is that immediately after I've written to x comma y, I want to write the same value, whatever's in x comma y, to y comma x. Flipping the indices just gives me the analogous position, the mirror image along the diagonal. So here I have, so here, here I'm reading it and putting it into one part of the array, and then I'm copying it to the analogous part on the other. Right, but that's not actually array. writing those values onto a sheet. Right? This is writing them Story onto the memory. array. Right. Yes. So on down there when you're referring to an actual sheet, how did you get those values on that sheet? Ah, very good. So here, what I've done is I've filled up that whole array. Right. Square, fold numbers. I didn't actually touch the diagonal. It's going to have the zeros that were in there to start with. And so what I'm doing here is I am reading those values off of that array and writing them to the sheet. So here I'm putting them into the array, and here I'm just taking them out of the array and putting them on a different part of the sheet. And this is, this is not a critical part of, the, of our task. This was just so that I could look. Control key. It was just so that I could look at this, so I could look right here at this array and have all the numbers right here. A little easier for me to see them than on that on that distance sheet, all, all populated. Okay, other questions? Okay, so we have a conceptual step that we have to make here. What we've done, and this is actually this is the complete initialize array. This is what we wanted to do. This fills up our array. We're ready to start solving the problem. But I want to be able to have several other functions working and looking at those same arrays. Anytime I declare an array or a variable, regular old variable, inside a subprocedure, as I've done here, these arrays are declared inside this subprocedure. They are they're local variables to this subprocedure. They're only accessible from inside this subprocedure. I am going to need to have like three procedures to solve this problem, and I want them all to be able to access those arrays. And so I'm going to put them at a different scope. I'm going to put them at a different place. I'll declare them somewhere else so that they're accessible anywhere inside this module. I'm literally just going to cut those three lines from here, and I'm going to scroll to the top, and I'm going to put them before any of my sub procedures. The first time I've ever done this. So far, every time we've made a variable, it's been declared inside a subprocedure. But, but, but lo, you can declare them outside of a subprocedure, at the top of the module. And these then, their, their life, they live longer. Variables that are declared inside the subprocedure, they are created at the moment that subprocedure starts to run. And when we hit end sub, that memory is released back into the wall. So you, you cut them out of there and not copy them? I cut them, yeah. It's important to cut them. If I copy them, It'll actually, it'll mask the module level ones, and I won't be able to it'll execute, but it'll, it'll, it'll mask them. So I 
removed the declaration from inside the initialize array, and I've put them up here at the top. Now, they're going to get, as soon as I start to write any code, this memory is going to be allocated, and it's going to stay allocated as long as the code's running, and even after the code's running. Then kind of once my code's done running, several things can kind of cause those variables to be released. Um, but you want to think, hey, as long as I've got code running, those variables are there and they're able, I'm able to run. So all, and the only change here was we move these up here. Are now, these are now module level variables. They're arrays of module level variables. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do. I would like to start off building a helper function that I know we're going to need. It's going to be called bin now. I think about the problem that I'm trying to solve. What I'm going to do is I've got to populate this array with a bunch of numbers. I'm going to start by putting hotel number one there. And then I've got to figure out what's the next hotel. And then I've got to put seven here. But at this point, if I ask what's the closest hotel to number seven, do you know what it's going to tell me? Yeah, the closest one in this whole data set is one. You need to go right back there. I don't want to go back there. I've already been there. So I've got to write a function that can look at the route array and let me know if I've been there. I want to say, you know, been there seven, and have it look at that and go, true. Yeah, you've been, you've been, you've been number seven. So number seven is in the, it's in the array. That's what we're going to do now. So let's create that function. Uh, I'm going to write it at the bottom. So function bin there. I'm going to pass it some hotel number. So TPL no has an integer. Now, all this thing is going to tell me is have I been there or not. So what type should it return? Yeah, Boolean, true or false? Boolean. Function bin there, hotel has integer, oh, has Boolean. All I want to do is look across that array and tell me if Number I've passed in is in the array. So let's go ahead and do it. In x as an integer, or x equals zero to the upper boundary of route. We start off with doing a debug.print of route. So at this point, it should just print off everything that's in that array. Well, that array needs to be initialized, and so let me, I'm going to create another sub-procedure here that will just let me test my bin there function. Sub test bin there. I'm going to call initialize arrays. Initialize arrays, uh, and let me. I'm going to go ahead and put in Salt Lake City first in that first location of the array. So I'll say route sub zero equals one. In the very top position of my route. I'm saying start in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City happens to be the number one hotel in our data set. And now I want to say print in there. And I'm going to I'm going to print bin there five. What should I when I have this when I have this written? What should I expect that to print? I haven't quite done it all here, but what should I expect this to print when I'm done with my bin there function? It should be false because at this point when I initialize array, route's going to get filled with a bunch of negative ones. Then we're going to put a one in it, and I'm asking, has there been a five? Is there a five in there yet? So it should return false. 
If I was to run it again looking for a 1, it should return true. Okay, so someone talk me through it. What do I have to do down here? Oh, in fact, let me go ahead and run it first so we can see that it's going to print off these values. Run test bin there, and that's a break point for the rid of these. And there it is printed off. We have some debugs in there. Here's where the code actually started. It printed the one for Salt Lake City, and then the rest of the negative ones, and then ultimately it printed false. And it did it again because I have two calls to it. I'm going to go ahead and disable my prints in my. I'm going to get rid of the regem, and I'm going to get rid of the, this print. This is up in initialize array. It doesn't hurt to have them there, but it's going to be a little more confusing if I'm printing off extra stuff to my immediate window when I'm trying to look at this stuff. Okay. So what am I going to do here in the function? How can I tell? I've got it written so that I'm, I'm actually accessing every spot in that array, every variable in that array. What do I want to do? How can I tell if I've been there? I'll get you started. I need an if statement. If something, what? Any thoughts? Go ahead. I have a different question. Ah, go ahead. The parameter hotel number? Yes. So that's, is it, that's not, you just made that up, right? That's right. It's an arbitrary name. As long as it's a valid variable name, I can use it then. Is it, have you like, the question is, have I declared this variable somewhere? And the answer is yes, I declared it right here. So okay. that's what this is. This is a declaration of a variable. It declare, when I declare a variable inside the parentheses of a function or a subprocedure, it's a special kind of variable called a parameter. But this is this is the declaration of it right here. So are you going to like use that later? Or yeah. Okay. Because here's the idea. I'm When I call bin there, whatever I put here in the parentheses is going to get assigned to that variable. And that's the whole point. I need some way to know what, what city is, the, is the, the caller of this asking about. When I call this, it's asking about five, city number five. So hotel number will be equal to five when I get to the end. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to say if, now here's the expression that lets me look at these each one of these individually in this loop. If the value in the variable, route sub, x, the first time through, route sub 0, then route sub 1, then route sub 2. If that is equal to something, what do I want it to be? If it's equal to yeah, hotel number. Then I want to do something. So here's the trick. I'm going to, here I'm calling bin there, I'm sending it a 5. That 5 is put into the variable called hotel number. I'm going to write a loop that looks at every single number in my route, and if I ever find one of those that's equal to hotel number, what does that mean? It means I've been there. That, that, that's a hotel that is in the route. It's already in the route. It can't go into the route again. Don't let it go again. It's already there. So what do I do? If this is true, what does it mean? Then there is true. Yeah, it means the function is true. Then there is true. That's setting the return value for bin there. Is there any reason at this point for me to keep looking through that through that route? Am I going to find it again? Well, if I've done it right, I won't find it again. It's possible that it would be there again. But what would I return if I found it again a few lines later? Very true? Extremely true? More true than before? There's, it, once it's true, it's, it's, it's there. There's no reason to keep looking. And so I'll just say exit function. I'm done. Get me out of here. I can say exit 4, and that would drop me to here, and then exit the function, but either way is fine. Let's suppose I never, this is never true. I, I never find a match between looking at every individual value inside the route and the value that was passed in. If I never found a match there, I'm going to go through all this whole loop. Never will have hit it. I'll come to the next, and then I'm done. What do I want to return if I never hit this? Yeah, that's false. I looked at them all, and I never found a match. The number you passed in is not in the array. That's what it says. And so, what do I want to return? In that case, I want to return false. If 
By the way, folks, what's the default value for a Boolean data type? It's false. If I don't ever say it's true, it's going to return false. Some people like to see it written out anyway. I don't mind having it there. So let's put false. If I ever get to here, then there's going to be false. I've realized that once I've set it to true, I'm going to exit the function, so I'm going to jump right to the end function and move on. So I'll, I'll bypass this line. Get rid of this debug.print, and I'll run this again. So now I should get a false for 5, and I should get a true for 1. So print these two things. Look, I've cleared that already. Test bin now. And it prints the false for the 5 and the true for the 1. So we've created a function that can look at that route array and can let me know if the number I passed into it is already in the array. That's going to be very helpful to us. Because as we're solving this problem, as we're solving this problem, as I'm looking across this, I need to find the shortest distance to all the other hotels that I haven't been to. So now we've got a function to let us know, is this even what I have to consider? I haven't been there, I don't even think about it. I mean, if, I, if I've already been there, don't even think about it. Okay. Now I think we're ready to start tackling the problem. So let us create another, so this one at the very top. We've got a separate sheet at the very top called calc route. This is going to be the one that actually does all of our heavy lifting. Does, does the work. I mean, heavy lifting does the work. Sub calc route. This has to start off by initializing the arrays. And now we're ready to start building the route. Now, here's what we've said. We're going to start in Salt Lake City. So how do we say start in Salt Lake City? In the structure that we've set up, what line of VBA do I put here that says, this route starts in Salt Lake? That's right. I'm looking at the, the route array is what I use to, to build the route. And so I'm just going to say route sub the very first position, which is 0, equals 1. That says start. It's kind of a weird way to say it. That's what it means. Start in Salt Lake City. Now I got to get the next value. Route sub one has to equal. Now here's where I've got to do the work. Here's where I've got to figure out what's the next nearest city that I haven't been to. I don't want to do it here. I want to create a function that does it. So we'll only call it next nearest hotel. And I'm going to pass it one. I'll need to generalize you know, this line a little bit here in just a minute. But I'm going to pass, I'm going to so make a new function called next nearest city, next nearest hotel. I'm going to pass it down a hotel, and it's going to send me back, great, what's the next nearest one that you haven't been to? All right, so we're going to pause on our calc route and go make another function. R O U T. So this is going to be a function, next nearest hotel, I'm going to pass it a hotel number as an integer, and what, what should this one return, what data type should this return? We, we've got to, when we call this, we're saying, figure out the next nearest hotel, and whatever this function sends back, where am I putting it? I'm putting it into my route. What does that route hold? Integers. So what does this have to return? It has to return an integer. The truth is, if it returned a string, it would probably convert for us automatically. But we should <laughs> send back the right type. Oh, as integer. Okay, so here's what I have to do now. And this is, this is why we filled up this array.
completely. So now I can look right here just at row number one, row number Salt Lake City. And what I have to do is run across this whole thing and say, what's the smallest number here that I haven't been to? In-class exercise, I'm going to give you two and a half minutes. What I want you to do is just put a loop right here that will print off all of the values, all the distances from Salt Lake City. It's going to be very similar to what we did down here where we're looking at this array. It's a little bit different because we're looking at a two-dimensional array where we're only looking at one row on that two-dimensional array. So, the task. Build the loop that will show all the distances from Salt Lake City. Get out my trusty tiger. Two and a half minutes. On your mark. Get set. Go. All right, let's take a look. So this is so similar to what we had down here. I'm just going to copy the whole, copy the guts right out of that one. We'll start from there. Out of our in there function, we're going to declare variable x. We're going to go to the upper boundary of the route. That should be okay. We've got that loop. All I want to do is do a debug dot print. Of my distance array, Now I'm passing in hotel number. So when I call this, I'm passing in the one here. So I'll use hotel number. But what would it, so I hope when I run this the first time, hotel number is going to be one. So what would happen? Oh, whoops. One X. Try that. What would it do if I did this? What if I? What would it print? And I'm looping through this, I'm going to print x sub x, distance sub x comma x. It'll do 0, 0, and then 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. It's going to print right on the diagonal. It'll be very boring. It's all zeros on the diagonal. What I want to do is I want to fix one of these. It doesn't matter if I fix the row or the column. I want to fix one of those to be the hotel number. So now when I pass this hotel no. So now when I pass in a one, this will be fixed for this loop, this will be fixed at one. And I'm gonna actually I'm gonna print distance sub one comma zero, one comma one, one comma two, one comma three. And that's gonna go right across that that row. You should print those values out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run calc route and see if it does that. There it is, 691, 0, 653, 661. Those are the distances from Salt Lake, from the Salt Lake problem. Looks pretty good. How many of you got something very close to this? You? How many of you actually realize I need to use a loop to do this? Okay, good. Okay. What's that? You said build the loop. No, I said build the loop. Let's try to be instructions right here. That means you at least read the instructions. That's a good sign. Okay. So here's here's this is really this is really the hard part of this function uh, of this whole procedure is we've got to figure out which is the which is the shortest distance. But not only that, we need to know what's the index number of the hotel that's the closest to the shortest distance from our reference city in this case Salt Lake. Go ahead. So in the in that loop, you've got the upper bound of the route array. You want that as the route array that doesn't use the same in this case, but. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah, in this case, I'll use route or I'll use hotel. Since I know my distance array is square, turns out upper, I can put distance in here. I'll go ahead and do it. I'll change this to distance. But the trouble is, distance doesn't just have one dimension, it's got two dimensions. And so I have to tell it which dimension I'm looking. They don't, it doesn't have to be square. You can have, be rectangular. 
I gotta tell it which dimension I want. In this case, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and use dimension number two. Should be one or two there. So if I have a multi-dimensional array, I have to tell which I have to supply which dimension I'm interested in. Route would work just fine because I know this problem, the route's the same size as the dimension and the hotel, because the whole thing's gonna be popular. Okay. So how are we gonna do it? We're going across, we now have access to these values individually. We can look at we've got the scaffolding in place. We're, we're processing, going across each one of the values for the distance from Salt Lake. So what's, how, what are we going to do? How are we going to tell what the smallest one is? Any thoughts? Aha! Uh -huh. You're thinking like Excel experts. Use the max. Maybe max and match. That would work, actually, to do it. We could use the worksheet functions, find the max, or not max, min. Find the minimum number, and then find the index of that minimum number by using the match. Uh, that would do the trick for us. Uh, it doesn't really help us cut our teeth into arrays anymore, so we're not going to take that approach. Instead, here's what I want to do. As I look across each one of those, I want to say, well, let me start with some arbitrarily large number. And then say, hey, have I found a distance that's smaller than my current contender? So yeah, I found a smaller one. I need to remember what that value is and remember where I saw it, which index number I saw it at. And then keep looking until I find, ah, here's another one smaller. That's my new Smallest number that I've seen. Remember that and remember where I saw it. Keep going until I find one even smaller than that and go, aha, there's my next smallest one. I've never seen one smaller than that. Remember that and go across the whole array, the whole row of that array until I find the smallest one that I've seen. To do that, we need a couple of variables. So let me, damn, I'll call this one short, short distance. Short distance as, hmm, what data type should it be? Yeah, single position floating point number. I, I'm going to be looking at values from my distance array. And it, those are singles there, so we should use single here. Okay. Now, I'm also going to have to keep track of the index number where I saw that shortest distance. And I'll call that short index. It's really index of the shortest distance, but I'm going to call it short index. Okay, now here's the trick. I'm going to start with an arbitrarily large number so that the first time I make a comparison, I say, aha, that's my best number. That's the, that's the new shortest number. So I'm going to set short distance equal to 24,000. 24,000 miles is the circumference of the Earth. So if I've got a distance from one hotel to another that's, that's longer than driving all the way around the world, it's probably not the best route to actually get there. And so, yeah, it could be anything larger than, as long as, that, as, long as it's a number that's larger than I know that any number I might come across would be okay. This will force the first time I have a valid comparison to say, okay, that's that's my first one that I want to consider as the best contender. Okay, so now instead of printing this, I'm just going to say if the distance I'm currently looking at is less than the short distance, then what do we do? What does it mean? What does it mean if this condition is true. Looking across the array, that's true. What does it mean? I have found I have found a new possible shortest distance. I don't know what's in the rest of this array, but that's the smallest one I've seen so far. So I need to remember that one. So in that case, I'm going to say that my short distance now takes on a new value. It takes on whatever we just saw. That's the short distance. Now, I have to remember where I saw that. So I've got to keep track of the index where I saw that. What's the index number? How do I, re how do I record the index? Yeah, x. I'm using x to keep track of where I'm looking. Now, here's my variable x. It's keeping track of where I'm looking in the array. 
So when I found a small number, x is telling me the index where I found that. So short index equals x. So now I'm going to loop all the way through this, and each time I find one here, then we've got a new possible one to keep track of it. Ultimately, when I'm done going through the whole thing, what do I have to do? I've got to return some integer. What do I return? I'll get you started with this. I'm going to set the name of this equal to what? Yeah, short index. I'm going to try to find the index of the city with the shortest distance. And so whatever was the last one I saw, it'll be sitting there in short index. I can just return that up. We have one more important step to do here, but let's go ahead and run this code with this on. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. I'm going to run my calc route procedure. And we're going to start to go through this. So I'm going to scroll up just a bit more. Okay. So right now, short distance should be 24,000. X hasn't been set yet, so it's got its default value of zero. And here I'm doing my first comparison. So right now, my hotel number is one. That's what got passed in here. So I'm looking for comparing to Salt Lake. And now my X is zero, so I should be my distance should be whatever the first distance is in that array. This should be the distance from Salt Lake to that first property down in Los Angeles. So what do you think? Is this condition going to be true? That distance right now is 691. Is this condition true? Yes. Here's actually a little trick you can do in, in when you're in break mode. Copy that, come up here to the immediate window, and just print that whole expression. It'll tell you if it's true or false. Yeah, that's true. Because my distance is 691, my short distance is 24,000. 691 is shorter than 24,000, and so I can come into here. So I, if I, when I step on this, F8, it should come in here, record now my new short distance. My new short distance now, 691. That's the smallest distance I've seen. First distance I've seen, it's the smallest I've seen. And I'm going to remember that I saw that at position number zero. Now that's great. So I've got my first one. Okay, so now x is 1. My short distance is 691. What's my distance that I'm currently looking at? Ugh. Distance is 0. Why is distance 0? I hear kind of vague mumbling. Someone speak with certitude. Yes. Isn't this the diagonal where it's a distance from Salt Lake to a hotel? Yes. So right now, X is 1. Hotel is 1. Hotel number is 1. I'm looking at the diagonal. Well, here's the good news, folks. I don't really have to think about the diagonal. Because if I'm on the diagonal, I'm looking at the city that I'm trying to find the next city from. All I have to really consider is, is this a city that I've been to? The very reason I'm looking at the city is because I've been there. It's now the next... I'm trying to find the next step in the route. So it's not its not enough to just know, is the distance I'm looking at shorter than my short distance? It has to be shorter than the short distance, and what? It's got to be one that we haven't been there. And been there, x equals false. Or, because been there will return true if I've been there. Or I can say, not been there. Either one's going to get me to that same expression. This one reads a little bit better. So if the distance I'm looking at is shorter than my current shortest distance, and it's a city I haven't been to, then coming here is my next best contender. So if I just evaluate been there right now, been there is true. I've been there to hotel number one. And so not been there will be false, and because this is an and, it doesn't matter what this is, this can't evaluate the true. So I will just step over that. 
and keep going. It finds the next one. Aha, so a vector x equals 2. Short distance is 691. Distance is 653. That's my next best contender. I execute through that. 3 doesn't find it. 4 doesn't find it. 5, doesn't, 5 finds it. And so I've now set my short distance to 649. 6 doesn't find it. 7 finds it. Short distance is 649. Next distance is, five, is 425. It's my next best contender. Remember where that was. And I can go through the rest of them. I will not find one closer than 7. That's Las Vegas. It's the closest one to Salt Lake. And so, run through the rest of that loop. Short index is now 7. Next nearest hotel is going to equal 7. That's the next closest hotel to the Salt Lake City that I haven't been to. This was the heavy lifting in this algorithm. It's right here, and we're done. And yet, we've only got our second route put in. <laughs> only 35, 34 more to go. But this part actually now isn't too bad. So now, let me just go ahead and kind of build this out, and then we'll figure out how to do the loop. So my next one is going to say route sub 2 is the next nearest city from where? Route sub 1 is the next nearest city from Salt Lake. Route number 2 is the next nearest city from 7, which is Las Vegas. And I know what that one's going to produce. It's going to produce a 12. Uh, and then I think it produces a 19. Ultimately, we've got to write a loop that does this, but I found it's helpful to kind of write a few lines just out by hand and then think, how would I make a loop that does this? Now, the first, this first vector over here, this is an easy set of numbers to produce. This set of numbers to produce looks pretty difficult for making a loop. Any thoughts on how I might do that? Ah, the route number from the prior step. Right, because I put the 1 here in route sub 0, so I could say route sub 0, and that will be 1. This is going to produce a 7. It's going to put 7 where? In route sub 1. And so I can get 7 by looking at route sub 1. That's going to bring back a 12 and put it in route sub 2, so I can get 12 by looking at route sub 2. That'll bring back a 19, so I can get 19 by looking at route sub 3. Now I've got a sequence of statements. I feel like I can write a loop that would just produce, that would redo that all with one fell swoop. So let's go ahead and do it. Again, x as an integer. 4x equals, hmm, I'm going to start at 1 and go up to 35, so 4x equals 1, 2, we'll go to the u bound of route. Next. And so everywhere I've got a 1, I put x. Everywhere I've got a 0, I put x minus 1. And that should generate the whole route. Huh? The first one was pretty easy. Started in Salt Lake. The second one, pretty hard. We had to write the next nearest hotel, and we had to write the been there functions to do that. But the rest of them weren't too bad. So we've got that logic in place. Learned over and over. Let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and print out this route and take a look at it. So I'll do a separate loop to print the route out. Do you want to print the immediate window or do you want to write it out to a worksheet? Worksheet? All right, so let me get myself a sheet to hold the route and see what do I want to put. I guess we could put it. Yeah, let's go ahead and give ourselves another sheet. So I'll make a new sheet. I'll just name the sheet route. Alright, so we've got a sheet named route. 
me go ahead and write this out to the wrap sheet. Out route. Okay, so route, I don't know if it's sheets, sub route, not cells. See, we're starting off at, actually, we want to start at zero in the first position. So cells x plus 1, comma, column 1, dot value is going to equal, why don't we just go ahead and put that as the, the, the number. So that's going to be route sub x. This is going to show a bunch of numbers. I'd like to also show the name of the hotel. So, how do I print the name of hotel number one? How do I access the name of hotel number one? I have an array called hotel. If I give it a one, it gives me back the value that's in that variable, the number one variable there. So when I print number one, my this will print so it's the first place, let's print one the first time through this loop. I can actually print the name of it by saying hotel sub route sub x. So when x is zero, route sub x is one, hotel sub one is Salt Lake City. I should print that out. I want to go into column two. We should be able to run that. It should calculate the whole route and then print that route out onto the sheet. Let's take a look. There it is. It starts in Salt Lake City. Goes to property seven. Remember, that's the Las Vegas place in Fairplex, which is in the Los Angeles that hotel. I happen to know is, but we can tell it's three miles away from Anaheim by looking at the, at the data. And then there's the whole, there's the whole, there's the whole route. What do you think? Is this a pretty good route? We got to Salt Lake. We go down to Las Vegas. Go down to Los Angeles, we're down in Anaheim area. Anaheim, Cerritos, Long Beach are all in the San Fernando Valley. Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, this looks pretty good. Los, again, Los Angeles. Hmm. Monarch Beach, you know where Monarch Beach is? I think it's somewhere near Los Angeles. Or maybe somewhere between there and, and La Jolla, that's San Diego. I grew up near there. So that's not so bad so far. Come down to LA, down to San Diego, San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. Palm Springs. It's closer to LA. It's like we're going back up to LA into Bakersfield. Hmm, what do you think? Salt Lake, Las Vegas, LA. Down here to San Diego. Now back up to Palm Springs. Back up to Bakersfield. Could you have done better than this with a pencil? Yes. Yeah, you could have. Um, but it's not, but it's not too bad. The whole point is sometimes you've got to be able to calculate this. You don't have the luxury of being able to do it by, by hand. Okay, where do we go from there? Bakersfield, with Central California, San Jose, that's Bay Area. Silicon Valley, uh, Pleasant, you know where Pleasanton is? I guess it's somewhere near San Francisco. Montreal's red herring just misnamed the data set. It's somewhere in the San Francisco area. San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco. San Rafael. Sacramento, we're headed up to Sacramento area. Now we're up to Seattle. We kind of went up, we kind of went up the coast. Didn't quite go the right way. We probably would have been better starting off by going down to San Diego and then coming up, but it's not too bad. Uh-oh. Scottsdale. Where's Scottsdale? It's near Phoenix. So down to Las Vegas, up the coast to, to Seattle, and then we went to Phoenix. That's not so good. Been a lot better going to Las Vegas, down to Phoenix, across to San Diego, and then up. So, as I mentioned yesterday, it's not going to give you the shortest route. Well, it's not going to give you the shortest route to drive, but it might very well give you the shortest route to understanding arrays, which is what we were trying to do <laughs> in the first place. Okay, questions on this particular approach? What we've done. Yes. Question. 
That's exactly what it means. The question is, what's initialize arrays doing here? And what it's doing is that we're going to run calc route. We're saying we've got to have a variable declared here. And then we're saying, aha, we've got to initialize the arrays. So right here, run down here and run this procedure. Bing, 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 do all these steps. And then when that's done there, it'll come right back up here and continue on with where it is. You don't need to write the stop and stop index. You just write the name. The yeah, so when I'm calling a sub procedure, I just put the name by itself. When I'm creating the sub procedure, I have to say sub, put the name, here's where it's defined. And then it goes all the way to the end sub. So calling it, I just put the name by itself. If you want to, it's actually legal syntax to come in here and say the word call. You can say call initialize arrays. Would you like that better? It changes a little bit when we have to start passing parameters to it. They behave a little bit differently when we say call. I prefer just to put it as a name, just a name by itself. Okay, one more thing that I wanted to show you with arrays, and then we'll talk about the project, the next project that we have due. When we were talking about string functions, I introduced one to you that I did a little hand wave. So we'll make a sub procedure here called uh, split demo. We, we use the split function, which took a string and returned, let us kind of cut it up into a bunch of pieces and pick which one we wanted. In the middle of that process, it created an array. So let me show you how I might do that now with a little more understanding of what the array is. Let me dim x, let me dim x as an integer, let me dim names as a string, let me value to names, names equals Nephi, Lehi, Soraya, right? Sam, Lemuel, and we don't want to leave Layman out of this. Okay. Now, I can, let me do one more thing here. Let me dim data as variant. When I split this, I split names, and I split it on, I split it on a comma space. I've got, that's what I have between each of these. The space wasn't there, I just put it on a comma. This is going to return an array. What we did before is we said, hey, I just want to pick one of the elements in that array. But now that we understand arrays, I can do this. Data equals. Data is a variant type. This is like the best use for the variant type. It allows me to say, oh, this function returns an array. Bind the variant variable onto that array, and that becomes the array. So now I can have a loop here for x equals 0 to the u bound of data debug.print data sub x. <coughs> so the fact is, we have captured the array that split returns, and we now treat that just like we treated our other arrays. This should now print off, let me go ahead and print the x as well. This should print off 0 Nephi, 1 Lehi, 2 Sariah, and so forth. So that's, that's neat. Now that you understand what an array is, you can really grasp what split is doing takes that, that string, cuts it up in little pieces, makes an array out of it, and then we can connect that up to another variable, and we've got that array and array to work. All right, that is the content for today. I'm going to go ahead and pause recording. <coughs>